apologize, but the general lady's time has expired. Uh, Ms. Hartzler is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's imperative that we have this hearing today because the botched withdrawal from Afghanistan, I believe, is the most significant foreign policy failure in a generation, and it's going to have ramifications for years to come. And so we need to get to the bottom of this. And, and first, I want to start off uh, to General Milley a question that uh, you, you made a comment earlier uh, that you'd be, uh, well, I wanted to ask you, did you tell General G when you talked to him on the phone that if we were going to attack China that you would uh, let him know ahead of time? I'm, I'm sorry, could you get the microphone a little more in front of you there? Make sure it's on. Yes. So this is a longer conversation. You know, it's a VTC with, uh, with General Lee. And there's a body of intelligence that leads up to this uh, that was persuasive to Secretary Esper, myself, and many, many others, uh, that the Chinese thought wrongly that the United States was going to attack them. I am certain, guaranteed certain, that President Trump had no intent to attack. And it was my task to make sure I communicated that. And the purpose was to de-escalate you, you shared down. all that earlier, and, I understand. And as just, part of that... I, just say, did you or did you not ask, tell him that if we were going to attack, you would let him know? As part of that conversation, I said, General Lee, there's not going to be a war, there's not going to be an attack between great powers. And if there was, the tensions would build up. There'd be calls going back and forth from all kinds of senior officials. I said, hell, General Lee, I'll probably give you a call, but we're not going to attack you. Trust me, we're not going to attack you. These are two great powers... And I am doing my best to transmit the president's intent, yeah. President Trump's intent, to ensure that the American people are protected from an incident that could escalate. I understand your intent, but I think you articulating that, that you would tell him, you would give him a call, I think is worthy of your resignation. Uh, I just think that's against our country, that you would give our number one adversary that information and tell him that. Uh, but I'd like to go on to General Austin and ask you a question. Um, according to President Biden, he chose you to serve as his defense secretary primarily because that you oversaw the full withdrawal of U.S. forces in 2011 from Iraq. But ironically, the 2011 Iraq withdrawal left similar conditions of governmental failure, uh, the empowerment of regional terrorist organizations, most notably ISIS, and a humanitarian crisis of refugees and internally displaced people in desperate need of international emergency assistance. The 2011 U.S. military exit from Iraq was short-lived, with President Obama redeploying U.S. forces into Iraq and Syria in 2014 to defeat the Islamic State. Despite the administration's reassurances, it seems we may be in a similar trajectory in Afghanistan. After U.S. forces abandoned Bagram Air Base in July, the Taliban quickly took over the base and released five to 7,000 ISIS-K and Taliban prisoners. When the last U.S. troops evacuated from Afghanistan on August 31st, this administration handed over total government control to the Taliban, a known terrorist organization with leaders of the Haqqani terrorist network now in key positions within the Taliban's de facto government. And in recent weeks, the Taliban has deemed education irrelevant, barred women and girls from school and work, committed horrific retaliatory attacks on members of Afghan security forces and interpreters, and established suicide bomber schools within the country. We also know that Al-Qaeda and ISIS-K both have reestablished a presence within the country. Even before the U.S. withdrew, ISIS-K claimed credit for a suicide bombing, which you have mentioned took the lives of 13 service members on August 23rd. So, Secretary Austin, is it true that the suicide bomber who attacked the Kabul airport on August 23rd was a CIA prisoner at the Bagram Air Base whom the Taliban released after Biden's administration left Bagram in July? Uh, I, I, uh, let me just say a couple of things. First, on why the President uh, selected me or nominated me to be his Secretary of Defense uh, I, you'd have to certainly go back to the president and ask him specifically why he did that. But it wasn't, I'm sure, solely based upon uh, my oversight of the evacuation of, uh, of Iraq. But I would point to you that there's a government in Iraq right now uh, that, that, that's holding elections. Uh, there, the United States military is in Iraq. I have four and, uh, seconds. Could you answer my question? Was the suicide bomber... Gentlemen's time, gentlelady's time has expired. I'll take your question for the record. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gallego. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. And generally, I don't see eye to eye with many generals, and certainly uh, General Milley and I have had disagreements, uh, but I think what was said